Hello, my name is Ian Lusick and I am in Dr. Rearsley's Bio 140 lab. The topic of my research was, is GMOs safe for human consumption? Recently in today's world, the health and safety of one's family have become a much greater concern. When people hear the term non-GMO, they automatically think that whatever the food is that they're purchasing will be healthier, will yield better health results, and will all in all lead to a better life for someone in their family. Now, can this really be the case? GMOs have been a very hot topic in the scientific community as a consensus has been unable to be reached due to uncertainty by scientists researching both sides of this topic. A little bit of background on GMOs. Around GMOs have been around for about 32,000 years. Now, it wasn't always called genetically modified organisms. We called it more genetic modification, where we were selectively taking animals or selectively taking plants and crossbreeding them in order to result in a better offspring, whether this offspring was produced more yield of crop or produced a more docile animal. For example, our our ancestors from about 30,000 years ago had wolves that followed them that were scavengers. So as these people would kill some prey and have their fill, they would leave behind the carcass and the wolves would follow behind and eat off the carcass, you know, down to the bones. Well, what the hunter gatherers did was then uh, take these wolves, the most docile ones, and breed them. And after years and years, probably hundreds or thousands of years of taking these wolves and breeding the most docile ones, they ended up having a pack of wolves that lived with them that soon became dogs. And this is how the domestication of dogs came about, was just by simply genetically modifying or uh, selecting animals that would be produce more friendly offspring. So this is how genetic modification led to genetic engineering over the years. Now, the two main people that had the biggest part in this were Boyer and Cohen. They found that they were able to go into the DNA of a specific organism, again, whether it be a plant or an animal. In this case, they studied in plants and they found a gene in bacteria that was able to go in and selectively cut out a segment of DNA, which allowed them to then put in a new segment of DNA, which would then alter the order of amino acids, ultimately altering the DNA. So a little bit of uh, information on the support of GMOs. So according to FAO.org, by the year 2050, the world will need to see a 70% increase in food production. This is across the board. This is grains. This is meat. This is dairy. This is everything. And this is due to the increase in population. So the shift of focus on GMOs has really moved from do we need to make this food produce more? Or do we need to make this food crop more resistant to a bacteria or more resistant to an insect? Well, it depends really on the area of the world. But now scientists are re where the research first started and, you know, trying to find crops that were resistant to the bacteria and the insects of the time. Now it's more again of the can we make this crop produce more yield so that we can feed more people with it? So one of the main uh, crops in this regard is genetically engineered corn. Now this is this is because corn started off as a very small plant, almost like a cattail looking type deal, uh, called tessanite, and it only had it produced you know kernels not much bigger than you see this corn here on this or this rice here on the screen. Produced kernels not much bigger, and there was only a few of them. Well, over the years, uh, selectively breeding the tessanite, which produced the biggest ears and the most amount of kernels it has led to something that looked like a modern day maize or what we call corn. Um, the reason why corn is so important in this regard is because corn is not used only for food products, but for many other products that are produced on a daily basis and that we all use every day. Um, so what affects the genetically engineered corn and what's making the corn that's coming out now better than the corn that we had before? Well, that is the mycotoxins. Mycotoxins can cause severe birth defects and they're almost like a mold that grows in corn that is kept or any crops that are kept in poor storage conditions, which is, you know, in third world countries where they don't have uh, air uh, circulated psych silos like we do here where we can keep our stuff fresh and unmolded for, you know, at least a year or two at a time. So in third world countries where they 
cannot do this. They have these mycotoxins in their food, which causes, again, severe birth defects such as like spina bifida and nervous system problems and respiratory problems, whereas the quality of life for these children is just not good. So what is being looked at now by scientists are edible vaccines. The reason for this is vaccine, getting a vaccine into the heart of a third world country such as Africa without the money to do it is not very easy. And people in Africa don't have the money to spend on getting these vaccines to them. On a regular vaccine, they're on a quote unquote regular vaccine, um, they're injected. So you need someone that is qualified to inject this vaccine. You need the refrigerated storage, you know, to get from the shore to the inner, to the inner hearts of the country and, you know, have, again, have someone administer this vaccine. And then the needles present a whole new problem of transferring disease and whatnot. So edible vaccines are vaccines that are grown through animals. So whether it be a cow that can produce a hepatitis vaccine through its milk, this is the kind of stuff that scientists are looking to genetically engineer now. Um, and a good example of this is the golden rice. Golden rice is a rice that has been fortified with vitamin A, which is a vitamin that those in the Philippines are lacking. And a lot of people die from it every year, mostly children growing up without this uh, vitamin in their diet. So yes, so the president of the Philippines was the first one to allow this genetically engineered food or this vaccine, this golden rice to be consumed legally and grown legally on a daily basis. So of course there's, you know, lots of support for GMOs, but there's also those who are opposed and feel that GMOs can cause lots of bad things. The first being unexpected gene interaction. Now, this is where uh, we can relate this to HGT, as we see here on the bottom, horizontal gene transfer, where as an organism would consume these genetically modified foods, that the DNA inside of the GMO and the DNA inside of the host or the consumer would interact with each other, causing awful side effects. Now, this could be where the organism is absorbing a little bit of the foreign DNA and not causing too big of a problem. But what has not been seen yet and has not been around long enough to study is the long-term effects of this unexpected gene interaction. And will an organism absorb enough foreign DNA to maybe start altering their own DNA and becoming genetically modified themselves? Now, the reason that horizontal gene transfer is bad is as opposed to vertical gene transfer, where a parent is passing its genes onto its offspring, in HGT, we're seeing those of the same generation uh, transferring DNA across to each other that way, which will lead ultimately to more a greater chance of that unexpected gene interaction. So cancers can result um, is one of the greatest concerns from GMOs. But that has to do a lot with the glyphosate used as the, the herbicide or the weed killer uh, in the fields of these plants that are growing. The reason for this being that the shift, again, of focus in the field of GMO studies has been from finding plants that, can, that are uh, weed resistant or herbicide resistant or insect resistant to plants that can produce more yield as that is where the focus needs to be right now. So having to spray these crops with more glyphosate or the street name Roundup, this is what can cause cancer as consuming that more and more of this Roundup is not good and has been shown to, has been proven to cause cancer. But is it in a great enough amount in these GMOs to cause cancer? Again, we have not had enough time to study that. So protein alteration and allergies, what this is referring to is Say a child has grown up eating, let's say, blueberries their whole life. And one year, the parents decided to plant a blueberry bush that was a genetically modified blueberry bush. And it was genetically modified to resist a certain insect that was killing blueberry bushes in their region of the United States or whatever. So, again, this child grew up eating these blueberries and had no problem. Well, then this one year, this blueberry bush is finally ready and he eats one of these blueberries. And he has a awful reaction to it. And through research and doctors figuring it out, realized that the protein that was produced in the new genetically modified blueberry bush caused an allergic reaction in the child. So where this can be dangerous, again, is that 
someone grew up their entire life eating something, had no problems with it, alert allergically, and then one year decides to eat it and has an allergic reaction and has goes into anaphylactic shock. So this is why this can be a problem. So in conclusion, GMOs are found to be the next best thing, whether it be for herbicide resistance, insect resistance, or yield overall in the crop production. We're going to need something in the next in the next few years that's going to attempt to solve the world's hunger problem. There's not going to be less people on the world in the world anytime soon. The population is constantly growing and expanding, and we're going to need to be able to feed them. We're going to need to be able to feed them meat. We're going to need to be able to feed them crops. So genetic engineering needs to be looked at as not necessarily as an ethical means, but as a necessary means for the future. And so the negative effects of GMOs have not been seen yet because they have not been around long enough. And the negative effects proposed by scientists who are opposed to the use of genetically modified organisms, their research needs more time to be able to be proven. Their hypotheses are more long-term over short-term. So as of now, the GMOs are the best thing that we can do to ensure that the people in our, in our world are fed. So my opinion is I think that genetically modified organisms will be around for the long run and will be, again, the next best thing in order to supply the food and quality food fortified with vitamins and minerals and proteins that the world will need to survive. Thank you.